The 2014 KCB Kenya National Rally Championship begins its long journey with the opening round, the KCB Malindi Rally. The championship begins where 2013 ended with a trip to the coast and a return to Malindi, which last hosted a rally over 20 years ago. Much has happened in the two-month break. There had been time to rebuild tired and battered cars after the 2013 campaign. But for several of the drivers, the interim had also been host to the East African Safari Rally Classic. After a titanic battle, Kenya's Ian Duncan had taken the honors beating former world champion Stick Blomfist. Four Kenyan crews finished in the top 10 position on what had been another epic African adventure. Sadly, the interim had also seen the loss of one of the rally fraternity's favorite sons, Ben Mushemi, known affectionately as Babashiro, after a long and a brave battle with cancer. His support and friendship will be sorely missed by all who knew him, but his legacy will live on. The crews arrived outside the Ocean Beach Hotel on Malindi's North Shores for the first scrutineering of the new season. The slates had been wiped clean and once again there will be everything to play for. Defending champions in their respective classes will be hoping to have the same success as 2013 whilst their rivals will be determined to snatch away their crowns. The coast event normally runs later in the year and the blistering February heat was a real concern for crews and service teams alike. Crews lined up at 6 a.m. outside the KCB branch in the center of Malindi town for the start of the first of eight rounds in the 2014 championship. For Malindi residents, it was a long-awaited return and despite the early hours, the streets were lined up with eager fans excited to see their heroes. Carl Tundo and Tim Jessop would lead the crews away. The round-robin system means they had the honor of road sweeping on the opening round. They were followed by 2013 champion Baldev Chaga, who was looking for a podium to get his title defense underway. The crews would head out for the first of 12 stages, taking the crews inland towards Savo before heading south towards Bemba and then several fast runs along the Sekoke Forest fence line. Six stages will be repeated twice, starting with a short 14km section just outside Malindi town. The crews would then head to Sosobora, taking them on reverse loop around the Mongea Hills that had been used in the last round. This was followed by a 22km section which was looped back to Madamani before the longest section from Dida that took the crews up the Sikoke fence line in the service park at Jilore. Service would be visited four times during the day. A short 9km stage took crews through the Sekoke forest to the Malindi Mombasa road before the super special in Malindi town. All the stages would then be repeated before the finish at the Ocean View Hotel. Stage 1 was a very fast 14km section on the outskirts of Malindi. It was a dream start to the event with fast straights, sweeping bends and junctions to shake off the cobwebs and get the crews back into the driving seat. Ian Duncan and Baldev Chaga were immediately on the pace, setting the joint fastest time a full 20 seconds faster than anyone else. Carl Tundo was being more cautious as he opened the road. It had been a while since anyone had seen a rally car in this area and he wasn't taking any chances. Rajbi Rai signaled his intent to push in 2014 by setting the fourth fastest time. It was his first event with the new navigator Tim Charlin who had previously co-driven Geoff Bell. Quentin Mitchell was fifth fastest in his distinctly white Impreza. He has yet to secure a sponsor for 2014 after the withdrawal of Oil Libya and he desperately needed a good result to impress potential new sponsors. Manvir Barian arrived at the coast in the beautiful new shape Impreza and was getting off to a flying start, setting the sixth fastest time. Isa Amwari was seventh fastest, only three seconds further back in his Evo 9. Jesse Chathe was caught napping, possibly a bit rusty after the two month layoff, and without the benefit of competing in the classic safari, he was eighth fastest, 44 seconds off the pace. Onkarai was ninth fastest, familiarizing himself with the four wheel drive again after driving a Porsche 911 with Baldev Chaga to fifth overall on the classic rally. 
Rounding out the top 10 on the opener was Tejvir Rai in his R4 N16, trailing his brother by only two seconds. Alex Horsey was another driver getting used to four-wheel drive after finishing sixth on the classic safari in a Porsche 911. He went 11th fastest. Hardy Pressy was 12th fastest after an impressive outing on the last round in 2013. Unfortunately, it will all end on the next stage and he will be one of the fast retirements. Imran Mughal was 13th fastest and was hoping for better luck after retiring at the coast on the last round. Local hero Izar Mirza's rally wasn't getting off to the start he would have liked. He was down in 14th, dropping a minute to the leaders. Alice Dear Keith had narrowly lost out to Jasinda Chana in the battle for the S-Class honors in 2013. But with the defending champion taken as a batical and Mahesh Halai moving to Group N, he was hoping 2014 would be his year. Manmeet Puri went second fastest in the S-Class 23 seconds slower than Keith. Hussein Malik was hoping to tackle the full season in his Azar Anwar prepared Evo 6. He started cautiously not wanting to disappoint his mentor by making mistakes and went third fastest. Uh, I got it from Azar Anwar. He's uh, really been nurturing me ever since I started rallying. So I went and talked to him and told him, told him my dreams for 2014. Sat down with him, told him I want to do the Group S Championship. Had a lengthy discussion with him and uh, when I started rallying, he is the guy who brought me into rallying and trained me quite a lot. So basically I'll be his project for 2014 and uh, everything you see here is supported by Azarano. Dennis Mwenda had taken an emphatic victory in the two-wheel drive championship in 2013 and the defending champion signaled his intent to pick up from where he left off, going fastest and rounding out the top 20 overall. Victor Okundi was second fastest, but his challenge will soon fade with retirement. It was a huge disappointment after making the long trip to Malindi. Nadim Kana was third fastest in his front-wheel driving Pretzer, 48 seconds slower than Mwenda. The classic class was poorly represented, with only Aslam Khan and Malindi-based Rob Helia taking part. Helia was quickest and was lying in 21st overall. Khan had managed to rebuild his 911 after the classic safari and was looking forward to defending his 2013 title. The crews were then given a chance to refuel at the service park before following the Savo Road inland to the start of the Sosabora stage. There would be 118 kilometers before the next refuel and for some, this would mean that they would need to back off to get round. Tundo set off into the second stage at a blistering pace, setting the fastest time a full 27 seconds faster than Duncan to move into the overall lead. Duncan was second fastest and was now 7 seconds off the lead but beat Chaga by 15 seconds to open a gap to third. Onkarai was third fastest only 3 seconds slower than Duncan, moving him up to fourth overall. Chate also picked up the pace going fourth fastest as he settled back in behind the wheel of his Evo 10, moving up to fifth overall. Mitchell was fifth fastest but had broken a drive shaft at the end of the first stage and was penalized five minutes for speeding into the service area, dropping him down to 21st overall. Baldev Chaga was sixth fastest, 42 seconds slower than Tundo. He dropped back to third behind Duncan but still held a good gap to teammate Onkarai. Manvir Barian was getting a handle on the new Impreza. He was seventh fastest. It would take time to find the right setup for the new car and he was sixth overall. Tajvir Rai went eighth fastest, moving him up to eighth overall, heading in the right direction up the leaderboard. Rajbir Rai was 9th fastest in the Evo 10, dropping down to 7th overall, adjusting his notes and gelling with his new navigator, there were still plenty of stages left. Izar Mirza was getting back up to speed, 10th fastest was enough to move him up to 9th overall. Jasmit Chana had begun cautiously but also picked up his pace and moved into the top note. Alice Dear Keith was 12th fastest to move up to 11th overall and open up a commanding lead in the S class. Asad Anwar was making a welcome return to full time competition in a new Evo 10. 
It was still in European spec, so he was being careful not to do any damage. Don Smith was only a further second behind in the N16 and moved into 14th overall. Zio Kawaita was driving Ben Musemi's F9 and steadily improving his pace to move up to 13th overall. Dennis Mwenda was flying in the sprinter and moved into 15th overall, opening up a one and a half minute gap over Nadine Kana. Kana was second fastest of the F2 drivers and was steadily pulling away from Gurmit Thethi. Thethi was suffering from a misfiring engine. It was a frustrating start for his 2014 campaign on his home event in the new VW Golf. Stage 3 took the crews on a look towards Kilifi and back up to Dida. It was 22 kilometers long and as we ride on board with Mahesh Alai, we get a feel for the stage. Tundo was once again quickest to extend his lead over Duncan with Chaga remaining in third overall. Pick up the action on stage 4 with the crews tackling the longest stage from Dida along the Sekoke fence line to finish up near the service park at the end of the long loop. Alex Horsey went quickest to set his fast, fastest stage time, however, he had been suffering with mechanical gremlins. Manvir Barian showed what the new car could do by going second fastest over holding on Karai to move into fourth overall. Chate went a little wide on this kink, almost hitting the trees, but was able to catch it in time. He was fourth fastest and moved into third after Duncan retired. Both Chaga and Tundo backed off to save fuel but remained in their respective positions at the top of the field. Duncan's challenge ended with a broken ball joint and was fortunate it happened on a slow part of the stage. Yeah, it's not the best way to start a season, but um, okay, just broke the ball joint. So, um, okay, we're lucky like it was on a slow part of a section and not on the high speed part near the fence. So, 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 so it could have been worse, so we shouldn't complain too much. Izar Mirza was sixth fastest and moved into sixth overall after two good stage times. Onkarai lost out to Barian and slipped to fifth overall as the ambient temperatures started to climb. Damn hot, yeah, it's, it's quite difficult to concentrate, so you just have to just take it easy now. Rajbi Rai was a further minute behind and dropped behind Mirza to 7th overall. Waiter was getting to grips with the Evo 9 and went ninth fastest to move into the top 10. Chana also had two good stages and moved up to into 8th overall. Now Shad Kara in the Lotto in Preza was setting good times, going 14th fastest and moving into 14th overall. Alice Dear Keith backed off a little to conserve the car, dropping back to 13th. Malik beat Keith in the stage to go fastest in the S-Class, but was still over three minutes behind the Impreza. The win moved him into second in class. Dennis Mwenda continued to lead the F2 class, increasing his gap over Kana to over two minutes. Kana was content to focus on getting through the stages cleanly, unable to match Mwenda, he was keeping an eye on Thethi behind. Thethi was unable to fix the miss in the engine and was down on power. He could only hope the others struck trouble. As the cars arrived for the second service, the ambient temperatures were already in the 30s and it was hot work for the service crews. The drivers were focused on trying to get as much fluids into their bodies, ready to tackle the next two stages. Yeah, it is. It's extremely quick. Um, had a few issues with traffic, but other than that, the car seems to be going all right. Although, doing that full loop, I almost ran out of fuel coming in here. Uh, the heat is not so bad because it's still 9.30. But I know during the day it's going to get worse. So we're just rehydrating as much as possible uh, when we can. Um, there's not much time between the stages as well to actually just relax a little bit and just drink. You're actually going one stage into the next, into the next. So it's actually quite tight. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got everything. More of straights with a lot of ditches which are tricky. 
Uh, yeah, not bad. Going well so far. Uh, in the morning it was a bit slow, maybe sleeping. But uh, the, the other three stages, we I think we did some good stage timing. Yeah. Very much. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, it's just the heat that is really killing us. But uh, the sections are very smooth, very fast. And uh, we are just taking it easy um, to see whether we can bring the car home and uh, garner some points uh, towards uh, defending our championship. Stage 5 was a short sprint through the incredible ancient Hardwood Sekoke Forest, a wild heritage site which boasts several unique species of animals and birds. Riding once again with Mahesh Halai, you get a feel for the tree-lined sandy tracks. The crews then headed to the first run through the Malindi special stage, which will be visited later in the day as the final stage. Tundo was dominating the event and held a comfortable lead, going into the seventh stage, a repeat of the morning's opener. Fully fueled and back up to speed, Tundo was once again quickest to pull further ahead. He was on the edge and Chaga was unwilling to take the risk needed to stay with him. Chaga was second fastest to increase the gap over Chate to 1 minute and 31 seconds. Barian went third fastest to close the gap to Chate to just five seconds as the battle for the final podium spot heated up. Mitchell went fourth fastest as he beat to get back into the top ten. He was 23rd but there was still half the rally to go. Izar Mirza was a further two seconds back to go fifth fastest but was still down a 14th overall. Rajbir Rai was 6th fastest and remained in 6th overall 51 seconds behind Onkar. Chate was only 7th fastest and was coming under pressure from Barian. He would need to find some pace if he was going to hold on to 3rd overall. Onkar Rai was comfortable in the 5th overall. It was the 3rd event with Despage Morris and the pair were working well together. Alex Horsey had a scary moment on this bend, but went ninth fastest to move back into the top 10. Rounding at the top 10 was Tejvir Rai. He was 11th over a minute off the top 10 and would have some work to do on the remaining stages. Zioka Waita lost time on the stage, but was lying an incredible 7th overall after the first 7 stages.